Hi, right, this is a recording looking at the first bit of Revelation 22, and I'm going to say a short prayer. Uh, as we get to the final chapter of the Bible, ch final chapter of Revelation, Lord, we pray that you would um, you'd help us see um, what you've put in there by your word and your vision to John. Amen. Here is, um, here it is on the screen, the passage, Revelation 22. Um, what I've done is I've split it up in the way that I think it most naturally splits, verses 1 to 5 and verses 6 to 11. And um, you can see here that we've got a bit more description of the new creation. This probably should have gone with um, chapter 21 when I, when I broke up the passages. But hey, this is what we've got. So um, I think the emphasis as we look at the new creation here, we've, we've got some things that reappear like verse 5, the idea of no more night, uh, light, uh, God, the light comes from God. And we've seen that before. Um, I think I think one of the things that we see here that is new, though, is the idea of um, this river of life. Um, we've got the tree of life. So this is going back to Eden um, and uh, this Eden restored, really, which is what the um, the heading in the NIV Bible calls it. Uh, it's not part of the text, but you do see that tree of life. It's also a reference. I think it's in Ezekiel 47. This idea of a tree of life is there um, featuring in the temple. Um, but see the, the whole whole of creation is the temple because that's where God lives in the, in the new creation. Um, but I think uh, I've emphasised in bold some of these things that the, the river of the water of life comes from comes from God, comes from Jesus, the Lamb, and um, and that you've got the tree, the tree of life. Um, uh, but I think I think it's God centred, isn't it? The, 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 each side of the river is the tree of life, so the, the river is connected. Sorry, the tree is connected to the river in some way, um, which is hard to get our heads around as to how that looks. Um, and you, but it, but it's connected to God. It's coming from God. And um, there's healing for the nations. But but I think the idea of no longer being any curse, that's back in Eden, isn't it? No sin. Um, and um, the the, pres the presence of God is very um, clear here, isn't it? Um, the throne of God in that city. Um, we will serve, serve him, worship him, serve him, verse 4, and we'll see his face. Now, that's something that is quite special if you trace it through the whole Bible. So um, seeing God's face um, is something that um, no one could do. You think back to, I mean, even even Moses could see the back, the back of God uh, is the way it's depicted in Exodus 33, 30 something, 32, 33. Um, but, but Moses asked to see God's face. And he couldn't. John 1. Um, no one has ever seen God. John 1 verse 18. Um, I think it is. Uh, and towards the end of John 1, the prologue anyway. And um, you, you see that there, the idea that we can't see God's face. Um, but we will here in Revelation 22, right at the end. Uh, his name will be on their foreheads, this sort of kept safe belonging to God. Um, uh, that, that's an image, the name name on foreheads, that, that's, an, that's reoccurring from previously in Revelation. This idea, if I've got the name of the beast, the mark of the beast on your forehead, or you've got the name of, of the lamb, the mark of the lamb. Um, belonging to him forever and so whilst we see some reoccurring themes from chapter 21 here in these first five verses of chapter 22 i'd want to probably emphasize given the sweep of all of that emphasize here the presence of god in this new creation um which is you know adam adam and eve walked with god in the garden in eden and this new creation is eden restored but even better no curse um and um yeah um the, the presence of God is the big thing here. And we'll come on to unpacking that application in, in a moment. And then verses 6 to 11, there, there's this uh, the, the idea that um, we can trust this promise, uh, trust trusting the promise that God has given us of this new creation. Um, these words are trustworthy and true. And, and, and it's, it's, it's not just about the the new creation, but it's also the whole of the book here. The whole, the, it's, it's, we're getting to the end of the book and the reflection of the whole book is that this is going to happen. And we know this is happening in part, the, the difficult chapters where there's <clears throat> a broken world, Christians are persecuted, Christians, Christians are seduced. That That is going on now. And then the beasts are attacking us now and we're being lured away from Jesus now some of the uh, uh, at times. And the question is, will we be faithful? Um, but in the end, God will sort it out and he will win. And um, these things are taking place, soon take place. Jesus says, I'm coming soon. Um, keep, keep, keep the words of this prophet, of the prophecy written, this scroll in, in the book of Revelation. Keep the words means it doesn't just kind of put them on your bookshelf and, and read them. 
but actually live by it, live by it, according, obey it, follow it, stick with Jesus. And um, then we've got verses eight and nine. John is uh, back, like he did in chapter 19, he, he kind of shows that he's just like one of us. He worships other things than the true God, and we, we see that there. So it's, it's a worship of the true God, and stick with the true God, stick with that. These words are trustworthy and true. Um, do not seal up the words of this prophecy. People, you know, keep don't keep it to yourself, um, make it public. And um, and we'll just let people be what they will be. But that you know, we we uh, we're the holy person. Let's let's be holy. There's a, there's a command for us to do what is right here to live right. So here's my theme: God's new world is Jesus centered. That's the Lamb for Jesus centered people. I think that's what we get here um, in terms of the the second half of the the passage. And so we we long for Jesus. He's coming soon. Long for Jesus. Uh, long for his. Uh, trusting his promise of new creation, centering life on him, um, something like that. How do you apply this? Well, I think I would want to ask the question as we as we, as we we do verses one to five, at least. I think, do we, do we like the idea of a perfect world, a new creation? Uh, but actually, it does, is, is Jesus, is God sort of missing from that picture? We, we kind of like the idea that there'll be no danger, there'll be no death, no disease, um, perfect world. The shininess and the and the value of it, uh, uh, the preciousness of it, the safety of it, we looked at yesterday. Um, but actually, the the most valuable thing, the most important thing, is that we will see, we will be with God. He, he's the most precious thing. You get the idea that um, oh, it'll be fantastic to go to that re- distant relative who's got the big house. We love the big house. Well, what about the the, the relative who owns the house, who, who it belongs to? You've got to comes with they come with the house in fact the house comes with them it, it, it's it's about them actually and um, maybe maybe you can use that idea here to get this across the most important thing is god and he's the one who who knows us better than we know ourselves loves us more than we love ourselves um it, it speaks truth to us more than we speak to ourselves and um it, he's the one who our longings uh, are met in um, he, he is the perfect the perfect companion who wants to be with us and um, the question is do we want him and you can't have you can't have new creation without god um, people want heaven, want the perfect world, but don't want God. And you've got to have both. You've got to want God um, to be there. So, are we Jesus centered in our longings? Um, and maybe pray that pray that we pray that we see that Jesus is the most exciting aspect of this new creation. That we be with Him, um, our Creator and Savior. And then, um, do we live now as Jesus centered people? This is the second half of the passage. Um, maybe this is the test of whether we we are we will be that excited about Jesus then. Are we excited about Jesus now? Um, so is Jesus the, uh, the number one person who we worship and um, we're looking forward to in in, in future? Um, is it, you know, we're looking forward to his coming soon. Is that the thing that most, we're, the most excites us? Yeah, we're excited about Christmas, excited about a birthday, excited about whatever might happen. Um, but... Um, in the future but the, the number one exciting thing over it all is that we will be with christ with, with with our savior and so worship him as number one in our lives over everything else and uh, do our lives reflect this in living as jesus wants just a comment um in terms of how we might get across this for the children the youth and this idea of um they will see his face verse four um so it maybe it never occurred to you but it would occur to me and I kind of think, oh, don't do this. But verse four, it could be tempted to try and draw God's face. Don't do that. Uh, don't, we don't want to violate the second commandment. Um, uh, drawing pictures of God. Um, no, uh, we can't do that. Um, so this is something we can only imagine. We should leave it to our imagination. Um, but we shouldn't try and draw draw God's face in that way. So so don't do that, um, please. <laughs> let's not... Let's not um, Make God in our image as we want him to be. He's made us in his image. That's the way, right way around. Um, so just just be aware of that. Very, if you were thinking of doing that as a kind of a, an activity of some sort. Um, but but I think I think uh, we want to sort of convey the idea of God, and that's why I often I don't, I don't try and draw God. I just write the word God and maybe put a crown or Jesus and a crown. I don't try and draw 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 anything that is created because. God is not a create creature. It's not created, um, but just get sort of uh, that. That is the most important part of this new creation, and um, that is who we're to live with. If you want to convey that in, in pictorial form, 
I'd encourage you to do it that way. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you love us so much, that um, you are the one who um, has saved us, created us. And even though we've walked away from you in, in Jesus, you, you, you've loved us. That's why he came the first time. When he comes again, as Jesus says, he's coming soon. Help us to be excited about that. Help us to be, uh, that, that's the thing we're most looking forward to at the end of our lives. And in this new creation, meeting you, seeing you face to face. We can't imagine what that would be like, but we can imagine the joy of, of seeing a loved one's face who we haven't seen for such a long time. And, and that that's going to be this, um, but so much, much, much more. And so help us to be excited about you. Help us to worship you first and foremost above everything else while we wait for that time to come. Um, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to cling um, to this uh, to this uh, word, to keep this prophecy, as John calls it, um, uh, as John hears it, and um, to know that you're always a trust with me and true as we wait for that day. Amen.